Hello, my name is Dr. Anand Tripp. I'm a consultant neurologist and honorary associate professor. I'm based at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery, Queen Square, London, but I see patients privately at the Cleveland uh, Clinic London and uh, the Queen Square private consulting rooms and the Clementine Churchill Hospital. I am a general neurologist and I see patients with all manner of different neurological uh, symptoms. But today we're going to be talking about my area of special interest, which is multiple sclerosis. There are three main subtypes of multiple sclerosis, MS. The most common way that patients will, with MS will present is with a relapse, which consists of a set of neurological symptoms that last at least 24 hours, but typically days, weeks, or even months. This is followed by a period of recovery, often a very good level of recovery, and then a period where they remain quite well, known as remission. So this form of MS is known as relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Historically, many patients with relapsing remitting MS will, after a period of time, perhaps at least 10, or 10 to 15 years or longer, convert to a different subtype of MS called secondary progressive MS. In secondary progressive MS, the relapses are far less frequent and often usually stop completely, but there is a gradual deterioration in neurological function. For example, uh, in, with walking or balance or uh, spasticity or other chronic symptoms. The third type of MS is the rarest type and is known as primary progressive MS. And this accounts for about 10 to 15% of patients with MS. In patients with primary progressive MS, there is no uh, pattern of relapse and remission, but rather a gradual slow progression from the outset, which can occur at varying rates over a number of years. Regarding treatment for MS, it's important to note that there are two strategies that we use. The first strategy is known as symptomatic treatment. And this involves treating the symptoms that trouble the patient. For example, treating bladder symptoms, treating uh, fatigue, treating spasms or stiffness. And this is a very important aspect of treatment with MS because it improves the quality of life. The second strategy for treating MS is known as disease modifying treatment or DMT. It's a really exciting time to be involved with the care of patients with MS over the last, because over the last 15 years or so, we have uh, a really a large number of treatment available and now a total of 17 DMTs available. The purpose of the DMT is to try and change the disease course of MS by reducing the amount of inflammation in the nervous system and thereby reducing relapses and reducing the changes that we see on the MRI scan. There are different types of DMTs depending on the type of MS available. And over the last couple of years, we even have DMT available for secondary progressive and primary progressive MS patients where there is MRI activity and the patient is able to walk. During the progressive stage of MS, whether that's the secondary progressive or primary progressive form of MS, there is a gradual deterioration in the patient's function in the way they walk, uh, in the way they, uh, they balance and other neurological functions. We believe that there is a change in the underlying disease process that causes this progression. And particularly after the disease has established itself, there is a switch from inflammation in the nervous system to more of a degenerative phase where there is a, um, a change in the uh, nerve cells and the nerve fibers. And that accounts for the disability that these pa patients experience. It's important to note that historically, patients were not able to access disease modifying treatments. And as a consequence, would more likely have entered the secondary progressive phase associated with increasing disability and a poorer quality of life. 
However, things have changed dramatically over the last 10 to 20 years. And we now have very effective disease modifying treatments, which when started early in the course of the disease, we hope will reduce the likelihood of converting to secondary progressive MS. And certainly looking at my own patients who have started disease modifying treatment early, they have been able to avoid developing any disability and live full normal lives, and normal, normal life within, in full employment, and they're able to start a family. And I think we need to be very optimistic. Unfortunately, it's not possible to avoid developing MS because we can't predict with any certainty whether an individual is going to go on and develop MS in the future. What we do know is that MS is an autoimmune disease. And by that, I mean that the immune system is usually um, built to uh, fight off infection. But in patients with MS, instead, it attacks the, the central nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord and the optic nerves causing the, the, the symptoms. What causes MS? It's believed that an individual who has MS has developed it because they have an immune system that is uh, overactive and that's due to their genetic makeup. And there are other external, what we call environmental triggers like a virus, um, low vitamin D levels, and other factors such as smoking and being overweight that all may uh, have a role to play in developing a mess.